Teofimo Lopez declares that Vasily Lomachenko is not the same fighter that he fought back in the pandemic 2020. Let's go. Let's talk about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Or should I say back with some more hate? And that hate comes from Teofimo. This is what he had to say. He says regarding Devin Haney at lightweight, undisputed fight with Lomachenko, which sources are saying is close to being done, nothing official, but as I've been reporting, it looks like we're well on our way to try to get this fight happening. Bob Arum has stated that, etc. Now, this is what Teofimo had to say ahead of his upcoming fight this weekend. He says, quote, it's going to be a competitive fight no matter what. But the reason why I think Devin Haney wins is you can see Lomachenko is not the same fighter, first and foremost. He is not the same guy that I faced in 2020. He has a lot of wear and tear on him, and we don't know how much work they were putting in, putting him through when he was defending his country in the Ukraine. We don't really know much info, but I think it showed he needs some rest in order to get this fight going. Devin seems more interested in fighting me than Lomachenko right now, but I think the best opportunity for him at 135 at this point would be fighting Lomachenko. Depending on how he beats Lomachenko, it builds our fight even more. I believe Lomachenko is going to cap on Devin Haney. However, just he says we just have to see what Devin Haney does he's good with his jab very good at keeping distance Lomachenko has a very hard time with people who do that hopefully we see this matchup next year we see the best fighters fighting the best now again to me this sounds like hate this sounds like a guy in Teofimo who lost to a guy that Devin Haney beat easily two times in the guy's backyard that's George Cambosis Jr and it sounds like Teofimo is now shedding his opinion and basically saying Lomachenko's not the same and he was in war and all this other junk to put basically put that out there as a precursor and almost hedge his bet. This I mean this is the oldest trick in the book. It's an old media tactic that constantly happens. Do you think it's a coincidence that Devin Haney has not been on the pound for pound list while they had I'm talking about old media pound for pound list right ESPN and then they had Lomachenko on the pound for pound list people are like how why he's literally at the point he was like one or two fights removed from losing to Teofimo and those guys were like Nakatani and beating Richard Comey who Teofimo knocked out and Lomachenko went all rounds with right so Lomachenko was on the pound for pound list a lot of people couldn't fathom or understand why he was on the pound for pound list but yet and still ESPN kept him on as soon as Devin Haney beats Cambosis again as soon as Lomachenko's in the ring after his fight with Jermaine Ortiz with Devin Haney and people seen how big Devin Haney looked next to Lomachenko Lomachenko said hey this guy's not a lightweight he's heavyweight ah right and as soon as this stuff Everybody got shook and they start they start having doubts and all that conversation was like, oh, Devin Haney's going to win easy. Oh, Devin Haney's too big. Oh, he's too big. But people like Paulie Malignaggi were just saying that Devin Haney would lose to that white boy, Lomachenko. And now you see the stage is already being set and the excuses are already being made. I find it funny, I find it hilarious, and I find it all too predictable. This is what happens, this is what old media does. They'll build up guys like Chocolatito, like Triple G. Hell no, guys, have Max, Maxipad, guys. They'll build up guys like Lomachenko, tell you they're the best, number one, two, three. They'll tell you Canelo Alvarez is the best in the world, and then when they, start looking like the fighter that they've always shown to be right and the competition the only thing that changes is the competition the competition elevates when they finally fight somebody that you think on paper should be a good fight Lomachenko fighting Tio Canelo fighting Bevel Triple G stepping up to fight Canelo or Triple G stepping up to fight Derevchenko then all of a sudden you see the flaws and it's not that these are new flaws the only thing that changed 
is a lot of people, Roger Mayweather told you, most mother don't know ish about boxing. And they showing the f don't. It's not that Chocolatito is old overnight. It's not that Chocolatito is a different fighter. It's he's the same fighter. He just fought Estrada, who boxed him well. And in the trilogy, Chocolatito didn't look the same. But here lies the excuses. And it, it, like I said, it's all too predictable. That's what I see from Teofimo. He wants Devin Haney probably secretly to lose so he doesn't have to hear about him. Because imagine this. Imagine if Devin Haney schools Lomachenko effortlessly or he makes it look real spicy or saucy or makes Lomachenko's face look bad and bloody. And then that's that'll be three opponents in a row. So Devin Haney was with Eddie Hearn and DAZN. Then he signs with top rank and fulfills this three-fight deal. And he's basically fighting Teofimo, quote-unquote, leftovers. And if Devin Haney schools up Lomachenko or stops him or drops him or mauls his face up and makes it look even more one-sided than the Teofimo fight, then what does that say for Teofimo? That's going to be a bad look. Like, hey, Cambosis Jr. dropped you, put you on the ground in the first round, bloodied your face up. You said you almost nearly died or whatever happened with your esophagus in the fight. And then he did it. Devin Haney did it in Australia twice. The second time being more aggressive. Now, if he goes on to fight your other opponent, Lomachenko, and makes it look saucier, then that that's a bad look for Teofimo. So that's what I think Teofimo is doing. I think Teofimo is now trying to downplay it. Like, oh, Lomachenko's been at war. You don't know. Like, I, like first of all, I highly doubt Lomachenko was on the front lines like Call of Duty video games. That's how some people are making it out to be. You know, he stayed at home. You know, you could say he's a patriot for that or, you know, whatever. That's fine. But people are making it like he's saving Private Ryan and they're, they're storming Normandy. Like, I, I highly doubt that Lomachenko was throwing grenades and all kinds of stuff like that. He, was, he just kind of stayed behind. But now this is becoming an excuse for his performance, which I thought he lost to Jermaine Ortiz. People are already making excuses like Teofimo for a fight that hasn't even happened with Devin Haney. And this is what old media always does. Again, they build up fighters, tell you they're invincible. And when they start fighting better competition and you see the fighter that Boxing Ego always told you these guys were, then they have to come up and reroute and you know navigate to some new stuff which is usually excuses oh this guy's old or you know he took too much time off or Devin was too big and too young no there's plenty of guy Mayweather beat Canelo and he, he was older than Lomachenko right and Canelo was younger and stronger than Devin Haney you know in the respective weight class he was uh, considered a knockout you know boxer puncher and Mayweather at age 36, 37 is mopping up Canelo and making him look like a schoolboy and really taking him to school. So this is Lomachenko's fight to lose. And if he's two-time gold medalist and what they say he is and what they've been saying he is for the last several years, then he should beat Devin Haney. But again, Omedia, they don't have faith in that. So they're already making excuses, already taking him off the pound for pound list. Boom. Subscribe to the channel. Best in the business. Y'all knew that. Introducing Super Thanks, right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you, whether you need a gaming, travel, 
gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.